mountains of the mangrove. So before we start the formalities, let me share a short uh, video. We are live on Facebook. Okay, thank you. The capital city of Kuala Lumpur lies a haven of peace and tranquility. Situated at the mouth of the Slango River lies the Kuala Slango Nature Park Videos, okay. or Taman Alam, an important conservation area for coastal and riverine mangroves. It is also a sanctuary for resident and migratory birds and a host of other amazing wildlife. The Malaysian Nature Society established the Kuala Slango Nature Park in 1987 for the Slango State Government as an alternative to a proposed golf course. It is a unique area of landscape made up of various habitats, secondary forests, a brackish water lake, mangroves and coastal mudflats. The visitor centre is your first stop at the Kuala Slango Nature Park to get tickets, drinks, souvenirs and information on the park. The park has various walking trails that allow you to discover the different habitats. All the trails in the park begin at the visitor centre. They vary in length, duration and highlight various habitats. About two-thirds of the park consists of secondary forests formed from degenerated mangrove trees. It is mainly dominated by strangling figs and other coastal trees, climbers and the mangrove fern. The secondary forests of Kuala Slango Nature Park harbours a large variety of wildlife species. Easily seen at the Kuala Slango Nature Park as a result of legal protection is the silver leaf monkey, a rare species of monkey found in Peninsular Malaysia. Exclusively tree dwelling, they feed predominantly on leaves and seeds of legumes. The young are dramatically different in colour from the adult. The variation in colour exists in order to attract the mothers, sisters and cousins so that they may help to protect and rear the babies. After three months or so, the colour reverts to the same shade as the adult. Another primate often seen is a highly mischievous and noisy long-tailed macaques. On your walk through the secondary forest, keep a lookout for various smaller animals. In the mornings, a rough skink can be found sunning itself to provide energy sufficient for movement. A master of camouflage, the green crested lizard can vary its body color through shades of green and brown to suit its place of rest. Easily identified is the green whip snake. Its prey includes lizards and frogs. In the middle of the park is a brackish man-made lake surrounded by a walking path with three viewing towers. This lake was created to attract birds to roost and to feed. It is a safe nesting area for approximately 156 bird species, 57 of which are migratory. Kuala Slango Nature Park is one of the most important birding sites in Peninsular Malaysia. family of smooth otters may be seen in the lake. Gregarious creatures, otters are playful but are highly territorial. Also in the lake area or close by, you can see plants such as the sea hibiscus and the noni. Park's mangrove forest represents a complex coastal wetland system, which is an extremely important intermediate between land and sea. 
Daniel, what happened, Daniel? Wooden boardwalks allow access into this amazing world of mangroves and to the mud flats of the Straits of Malacca. Okay, we will we will pause the um, the video there where we go into the talk proper itself. So Daniel was raising a hand just now. Lamping, maybe you can check uh, what's happening with Daniel. Okay, so again, welcome everybody. Uh, this talk is about mangroves of Kuala Selangor. Our speaker today is uh, Mr. Michael, and he is actually the manager of the um, uh, KSNP itself. Uh, Michael graduated from the Malaysian University in the field of management, majoring in tourism. He volunteered with MNS in 2007 before joining MNS as a staff in 2009. He was promoted as a park manager in two years later in 2011. And when he took over, he actually made a lot of improvement, uh, increased a lot of environmental education activities and do a lot of research work, which actually led to KSNP being awarded the best ecotourism site in 2012 by the Selangor State Government. And so far, uh, Michael has conducted uh, more than 800 environment education program, uh, conservation work, and also helped to develop the, um, the, the flyways as well. And outside of his work, he's actually a licensed nature guide, a nature guide instructor, and active member for Kuala Selangor Town Planning. And currently, he's actually pursuing his PhD at UPM. So uh, let me let us welcome uh, Michael. Thanks for joining us. Uh, go ahead, Michael. Hi. How are you, everyone? Good. Okay. Thanks. Yes. So. <laughs> Yes, what would you say? My name is Michael. I was the first one nature park manager. So today we are going to explore about the mangrove forest at Kuala Selangor. And I'm sure most of you know about the mangrove, but not really understand what is the importance of mangrove. So before I start, I just want to give some explanation about this park. Kuala Selangor Nature Park is actually under Malaysian Nature Society Management, but this land is belong to Selangor State Government. So, MNS is like a manager since 1987. So, we are managing this area. And our focus for the conservation. So, we do a lot of research and especially on the birds, animals, trees, all. And then next, we're going to the environmental education. As you all aware, MNS is a, like a strong pillar for the environmental education in Malaysia. So, our task is like our mission. So in Kuala Nature Park, we educate people. Everyone, especially MNS members, students all coming here to learn about the mangroves. Okay, so this was a part of our things we are doing here. And now we're going to this slide. Okay, and actually, there's a few sections. Okay, you all can see the slide. Okay, so basically I will explain what is the mangrove and what is the importance of the mangroves. And then after that only we physically we identify the mangrove. Okay, because I strongly believe that once we know the importance of mangrove, then automatically you will know about the mangrove. Otherwise, uh, for the normal people, the mangroves like uh, something like a dirty area, so smelly, no one coming to the mangroves. Even though uh, they pass by the mangrove, uh, they want things to go down to the mangrove to touch the mud, soil because everybody just thinks like uh, it was smelly area, so dirty, there's a lot of rubbish and a lot of the wild animals was living there. Okay, so now we understand first why mangroves is important. Okay, yeah. first, you all should know, mangrove, eh? this world is so big, but not every place we can see the mangrove. Mangrove only we can see at the 
tropical country. Okay, and at the subtropic, we still can see the mangrove, but the species, the richness is low. Maybe they only have a two species or three species. But in Malaysia, we are in um, equatorial land, Katulisua land. We have a lot of mangrove species, more than 50 species. Okay, and in mangrove, there's a two types. One is a true mangrove, another one is a back mangrove. Okay, true mangrove, we can see river the shoreline. Back mangrove is quite far from the mangrove area, but these trees all survive in the ice salinity area. Ice salinity means it's like a salty area. Okay, the survival place is in a salty area. Even the back mangrove quite far from the mangrove areas, but still it need to mix the slime thing like a brackish, okay, salt con content. And there should be a high tide and low tide because this mangrove area only exists at the intertidal zones. And mangrove tree, this was a only unique species which can survive in this kind of the sedimentation, ice salt area. Okay, and now this was the Colossal Nature Park. This area, green areas, all Colossal Nature Park. Okay, and this all is a secondary forest, and this is a lake area, and this all is a mangrove forest. Okay, and this is the Strait of Malacca, and this is the Slango River. You all know Slango River? Slango River is actually quite popular. Uh, there's a two things at Slango River. One is the seafood, and this area is all with the seafood. Who have been to the Kola Slango? I'm sure they have been to the Pasir Penabang Seafood area. The next is like a firefly area, Kampong Kuantan Firefly Park. Now they already changed the name. Century Clip Clip Kampong Kuantan. It's already become the century. Last time, just the park, now century. Okay. And this firefly also living at the mangrove area. But it's quite far from the Slango River. It's like around seven kilometer. Okay, from the Strait of Malacca. Because uh, it was a back mangrove. We call it a back mangrove species. Okay, Poco Brambang or Sonoritia casularis species. Okay, and our office was here. Okay, this was a place. Now I'm sitting, talking with you all. Okay, this is our office area. And from here, here, this all was our area, and yeah. here we got a boardwalk. Okay, this area we got a boardwalk. Now we go to the importance of mangrove. Okay, as we can see, there's a lot of things I brought here: beach protection, food supply, direct usage, nutrient pollution retention, education, research, recreation, tourism. So we go one by one. Beach protection. Once I say beach protection, people can understand how oh, this mangrove can protect the beach. Okay, we can build any wall there, but this is a natural wall. God already created there. Okay, we no need invest any money there. They will automatically protect our land from the erosion, from the wind, wave, even tsunami. Okay. You all can see this image. If there's a mangrove tree, okay, if there's a, any wave or flood or tsunami, for example, this mangrove tree will be like a first barrier. It will control the erosion or any disasters. Okay, if there's a no, no mangrove tree, it means what will happen? Human will let back. Okay, even for the storm breaker. If there was a mangrove tree, the way how the storm moves the different side. If there was a no mangrove soil cut, automatically the housing area. Every year there will be an issue. In, uh, near to the coastal area, a lot of people complaining that their roof is gone because of the wind. Okay, that's a common thing in Malaysia. Okay, even. Um, even in Malaysia, up to 2004, only we are more focused on the mangrove trees all after tsunami incident because they understand tsunami one of the it's like a barrier which can control and protect them. So that's why they are more focusing and a lot of the mangrove tree planting activities. 
this and next is the food supply okay fallen leaf branches at mangrove area there will be a lot of it's like a like a mud area is full with the nutrient which other small mammals can go and eat okay uh, aquatic animals will go and eat so why aquatic animals need to eat this because this was a part of the food chain if there's a no mangrove the food for the aquatic animal will be less if food for the aquatic animal will be less it means the big animals the aquatic animals will be die or less okay for example you can see this food chain starting from the mangrove algae all the small crustacean go to the shell crab gastropod fish and last the human we love to eat seafood but if there's a no mangrove there's a no seafood because according to the research eh, program of fisheries 25 kg prawns and other things okay and that's a, another important thing even in malaysia we have a east coast and west coast okay uh terengganu pang kelantan all in the east coast our pera selango even melaka negeri sembilan all in west coast and this west coast is a muddy area but east coast the sandy beach okay so that's the different but in mud area the fish high quality fish is quite high that's why most of the as for the fish also coming from the this area selango pera kada area because this mud flat provide lot of the food for the fish and fish become bigger so we can export but in east coast at the shore area still got fish but low quality maybe small fish but if you want to catch the big fish you need to go to the deep sea okay that's why even the our trade of malacca small area small it's like a few nautical miles only but the catches is high and next the import of the mangrove is the direct usage okay until today people are still using charcoal okay the charcoal is coming from the mangrove and it was high quality charcoal and next it's like a uh, last time people using for the building for piling eh? they use the mangrove tree for pile but the good part is in certain state in malaysia they already say cannot use uh, mangrove trees for piling anymore so they using the alternative way but why you use the mangrove trees because it was a uh, hardwood and it will take time to destroy anything okay and this is an important part nutrient and pollutant retention because mangrove tree is working like a in simple way i can say in cal they call alam flora okay what they do is every rubbish people like to throw rubbish okay anyway in malaysia okay not only in malaysia in world you go any country yeah, you still can see people throwing rubbish okay so if they throw rubbish in any big developed area city but during the rain it will fall to the small drainage and go to the big drainage to the river but end up to the sea but they think once reach to see something will lead or maybe other country it will go to the other countries but no okay that's a wrong and say this rubbish all will come back to our country the place where they throw because during high tide and low tide this rubbish all will flow okay flow and stuck into the mangrove area so what will happen all the mangrove area is full with rubbish okay and these small creatures mammals like a crab okay mud skippers will go and eat these things but last time is much better because most of the rubbish is organic okay still rubbish but organic rubbish but now most is not organic it's like a lot of the polystyrene plastic a lot of things so we need to go and collect it okay next is education research why education research important until today people are still using the mangrove 
for medicine okay for example there's a we don't kill some mangrove fern okay this mangrove fern is used for stop bleeding if there's any cuts in end okay in a crush just take the young leaves crush it and apply the place so the bleeding will stop but even the technology is so much improved but uh, if you go to the any hospital or clinic pharmacy they still giving the charcoal tablet if there's any problem it put poison anything then this charcoal tablet is coming from the mangrove okay other than that i'm sure now uh, everybody is uh, buying expensive air, air purifier machine water filter it's a korean technology japan technology it's a german technology something like that but just understand this technology the most important thing is like a carbon filter in study okay and this carbon filter is coming from the mangrove and just when my in korea or japan they got the mangrove but the number is low so what will happen we export the good quality mangrove from the tropic countries to this manufacturing to produce okay and but actually we already having here next is recreation to tourism okay lot of the european countries eh, they like to visit malaysia because at their country there's a no mangrove because they are not in a tropic they they are not in the equator line so there's a no mangrove so they will come to malaysia to visit the mangrove same like us we like to go see snow because not in malaysia so we go overseas to european country to check the snow to play in snow same goes to the foreigners from the europe they come to malaysia to come and see the mangroves and this is a good income but everyone know now it's a pandemic season a lot of tourism activity is low but during the normal days people will come and they will go to the mangrove because not only for the see the area because in mangrove area also we got the water birds we call baders okay here we got a lot of baders people will come and see and this benefits huh? we can spread divide for ecological benefits economical benefits and social benefit it's mean mangrove is really important for human well-being okay it's like a sustain to human well-being so is it important i'm sure it's important for human so we go to the next section the physical characteristic of the mangrove how this mangrove can survive here why we cannot plant other species because as first i say it's like a high salinity other trees other species cannot survive in high salinity area and next the soil condition okay for example this is a formation of mangrove okay this is a sea area and this a okay and we can see it's starting from sonoritia and from the end and beginning okay this is the first second third and fourth okay first layer and fourth layer from the land it's a sonoritia species and second layer is a bulgaria species and third layer is a rhizophora and this deformation why the formation like this because how they spread the seed and their root system how they support and there's the three different type of root system steel root knee root remnanthal root or they call pencil root the root, pencil root is sharp root knee root is same like a human knee for the shape like n and, and steel root or prop root it's mean the root is coming why this root is important because stability so and this is the knee root and this is a steel root 
Okay, now we go to the stability. This should support support the tree from fall because this is the anaerobic soil. Okay, and pencil root we can see at the first area and last area. Second is a knee root. Third is a steel root. And this root system really important first for identifying, for surviving, and stability. And this is the prop root, steel root, or aerial root coming from top to down. Okay, usually only the rhizophora species have this type of the roots, and it must be in third layer. But in Malaysia, usually the fourth layer is already gone. Only at a few places they got the fourth layer, but mostly they already cut down. Okay, for development and still surviving is like a third layer but at a certain area third layer also gone okay because this also high quality timbers okay and this is an anaerobic soil and this road roots are playing the important roles where they absorb oxygen and they also it's like a Make it stable. There'll be a lot of knee root and um, pencil root all over the place. So, if there's anything happen, it's like they will stuck there. You can see this is a knee root. It's like an N shape actually. Okay, and these roots also they got the eye. Okay, they call eye. The eye it's like to filter salinity. You all still remember what is salinity? Salinity is like a salt. Okay, salt intake. Sea water contains salt. High salinity or saline water. So this root will filter. It's same like human. We also cannot take a lot of salt. If we take a lot of salt, what will happen? There's a lot of problems like a pressure and a lot of other things. So how we release the salt? First, we didn't take the salt, or if already take the salt, we need to sweat. Okay, all the salt will come out by the sweating. Same go to these three. It will seem like human, but they will filter first all the salt using their root. Okay, then after that, they will use the water. If contain high salt, the salt will be released by few techniques. For example, the Exocaria aglocha species. Exocaria aglocha is a fancy name, but in local Malay they call the poco butter butter, rubber butter, because the lactic acid can make people blind. Okay, what we'll do is the tree will store extra salt into the leaf. Okay, if the leaf full with the salt, it will fall. Then other species, for example, the Abyssinia. Uh, all the uh, extra salt will go to the, the top layer of the leaf, okay? It's like a, they will sweat, okay? They've got a the water there, and during hot weather, the water will evaporate, becomes like a crystal, it becomes salt, okay? We can see on top of it. So this is one of the way how this tree can survive in the mangrove area, but other normal tree, they cannot, they didn't have this type of uh, system in their body. Okay, next, it's like a, their reproduction system, how they are growing, the seed, okay? And this is what we call mangrove propagos or rhizophora. Rhizophora species, it's quite big, okay? And this is the Avicenia, and this one is the Lumizera, okay? And now we can see this is a burgera. Okay, this is a rhizophora seed. You all can see, yeah, this seed is all quite sharp. But this one is like a small, can float on the water. Okay, so why this one is sharp, that one can float on the water? Because the sharp one, usually the burgera and rhizophora, it's like a second layer. Are trees 
and third layer three. So when they become mature enough to be a new tree, they will just crop, fall from the tree and stuck on the mud. You all can see here, okay? So then there will be a new tree growing from there, place. But this one small, the year. Same like uh, there's another species, Sonaratia. It's like a flower. Okay, will float on the water. Okay, this will keep on floating on the water during high tide and low tide. Just follow the water, and once the roots come out, they will choose number one or number four. Layer number one or layer number four. It's like on the first layer or last layer. Okay. If they are start growing during the high tide, it means they will be a first layer. If low tide, they will be a last layer. That's why. Okay. And now we can see types of animals which living at the mangrove area. Okay. Here we can see the silver leaf monkey. This silver leaf monkey at Kola Slango is an endemic species. Okay. The scientific name is a pressed by this Slango orinensis. So at Kola Slango, they caught call it orang slango okay orang slango because this monkey we only can found here at the bukit lawat area uh, just know in video you all i think some of you have seen the baby is a orange color and another one uh, this is the long tail macaque last time people in japan still people calling it a uh, crap eating monkey okay crap eating monkey but now they are a bit develop a bit they become modern, so they have a, some fancy name, long tail macaque. So we also have a pig tail macaque in Malaysia. Okay, and this is a long tail macaque. And long tail macaque is quite naughty. They like to disturb people, okay, especially women. Please be careful when you visit any park. If there's a long tail macaque, they will come and disturb you. But silver leaf monkey is quite tame on. And People like to feed this monkey, but actually, we are not allow people to feed. But you know, human, they think this monkey is so pretty because this monkey eh, can do a lot of uh, pretty face. Come near to the people, eh, go and begging, uh, give me some food. <laughs> okay, people think that eh, oh, if Michael didn't take care, they are pets. Okay, so they will go and buy some food and give. The problem is, they buy human food for the monkey. For example, eh, this long tail monkey. They know which shop sells a nice nasi lama, the delicious one. So morning every day they will go to the, the nasi lama shop, going for the food. <laughs> okay, and people also bring their fast foods like pizza, chicken, so on, come and feed this monkey. So so that's a bad habit. You need to change. Okay, and we also have a uh, egrets, okay, kingfishers. There's a lot of kingfishers you can see here, like a common kingfisher. Okay, blue yet kingfisher, white trotter, black cap, okay, white collared all. You can see a. Uh, and let's say agitant stock. In Malaysia, let's say agitant stock, the number is become less. Okay, day by day become less. And this nature, let's say agitant stock, is quite big. It's bigger than five years old boy. This is a digital stock, and usually you can see see at the shisha areas, okay, and become endangered species under IUCN. Okay, so now people are trying to taking care of this species, and next the Brahmini cat. Brahmini cat, I can see, is one of our local superstar. Every day you can see, but the problem is, uh, people already start these birds also in Langkawi. It's a quite popular. For the eagle feeding. Now in Malaysia and Kolasla also people just start for eagle feeding and we are trying to stop them. Unable, didn't success. You know, not everyone we are true environmentalists. Some of them they like to go and feed. And we also have a grey heron. And much keeper. Okay, at Kolaslango, we have eleven species of much keeper. Okay. 11 species of mud skipper, but the problem you want to identify 11 species, you need to know 22 types because male and female is a difference. That's another, <laughs> that's a giant mud skipper and small mud skipper. That's an easy one. Giant mud skipper is like a this tall, okay, it's a quite huge one. And giant mud skipper also cardio, they will 
eat their own species. Okay, they are smooth, they are cannibalism. Okay, they eat their own species. And we also have a colorful pitlet crab. Okay, you all can see the pitlet crab. And here we can see six different colors of the pitlet crab. The Uka species. Huh? So you have six types. They got the blue, light blue, red, yellow colors. And pitlet crab, the male have a claw. You all can see this claw. And female, there's a no big claw, just small claw. Okay, why male have big claw? So easy to find their girlfriend, they need to go and fight. That thing. Okay, so how they identify the winner, the loser, their end will fall. The claw will broke. So it will be loser. So the winner can get the girlfriend. But what will happen to the loser? Ah, that's an interesting thing. The loser will go and train yourself because they have two claws, one's a small and another's a big. So they will uh, train their small claw, become bigger, and there'll be another small claw is grow to replace the broken one. So what will happen? They will go and take the damage. <laughs> but that's only for the this crab. But human once broke, broke. Sorry. Okay. So now we go to another section. Eh? The problem, what's the main group area facing? Because, for example, we just focused the color slango. Color slango, just the remaining green lungs at the color slango district area. So it, it is near to the shore area, okay? And people just waiting to develop the place. Previously, this place, eh, they already want to make this a golf course. But luckily, a MNS member, a lot of the environmentalists, they go and propose to the Slango state government. And finally, in 1987, they make this a nature park and give to the MNS. So this is a part of things. And now in Slango also, the tourism industry is developed. But unfortunately, the SOP, we got a lot of SOP, but for this tourism SOP, people daily monitoring is less because there's a lot of boats coming out, go and feeding the animals, the eagles, that's another problem. Then pollution. Once the area become developed, automatically the pollution will be there. Okay, there'll be industrial pollution, even aquaculture farming. Because at the coastal area, at the mangrove forest, people usually convert, become shrimp farming for aquaculture. Okay, that's another thing. This is some of the features you all can see. In Malaysia, we are more need responsible tourists rather than careless tourists. Okay, so really what I say to the people, we become the responsible tourists, appreciate the nature, the importance, but don't become the careless tourists because people go and catch the animals, go and feed, that's all the problem. Okay, this is a some picture We'll go through. Okay, there's a green lizard. Okay, this is a crested serpent eagle. Crested serpent eagle is a fish, a snake eating snake. Okay. Okay, this is a mangrove tiger butterfly. Uh, in Malaysia, we can see at Kuala Selangor and Tanjung Piajo. This is a blue glassy. And this is a silver leaf monkey. You can see the orange color baby. A snake, dragon flies, stem flies. And actually, this is spider. Huh? This is a spider. And this is a tree climbing crab. This is a fiddler crab and shells. And this is some activity. What kids are usually doing at Kuala Selangor. Okay, there's a tree planting activity. It's all students. Okay. And this one's a quite interesting activity. They got the mud challenge. Okay, main group mud challenge. Usually the kids will love to do it. Okay, <laughs> if you go to the some of the countries, they got the mud facial. It's similar like that, but this one we will dig a bit deeper. Okay, so take the mud and do the activity to learn. Then other than that, we also doing the main group cleanup. As I tell early, there'll be a lot of rubbish floating from the river and up at the mangrove area. So 
last time it's so organic uh, materials but now it was uh, artificial plastic polystyrene so so we need to go and collect so before i uh, and uh, just want to say we cannot change other but we change ourselves we might end up changing the world okay so before i end my slide just because a lot of people have also have a turn it okay sent me okay because during this mco this park is fully closed but our staff still working here yeah? and there's a lot of maintenance work as you all can see there's a lot of monkey it's mean a lot of damage a lot of problems happen so we still need maintain and colorful nature park we didn't get any grant or fund from the government so many things usually the corporate companies so individual they will donate for us but during mco there's a no any activities so it's quite tough time but luckily there's a lot of the donators helping us to survive okay and thank you if there's any question you can just email me ksmp colors ramani chapar at mns.org.my okay uh, thank you very much michael and just on time Thank you, and there's a lot of um, a lot of learning there. So now we move on to our next uh, section, which is the quiz and the Q and A section. So um, we will give ten minutes for the quiz, and and during these ten minutes, those of you who would like to participate, uh, please do so. And we have uh, some prizes that are given by the uh, MNS uh, HQ as well. So uh, yes, it should be uh, quite exciting to receive those prizes. But do your best uh, on the quizzes. And uh, while uh, Harris, you don't mind to release the um, quiz link, please, onto the um, chat chat room. And also, uh, Learn Ping, if you don't mind to release onto the Facebook as well. And then we can start to to take on the uh, Q and A uh, themselves. Okay. So while while those is go, while that is going on, um, let me just uh, reiterate what uh, Mike have said. So during this MCO, which is for the past um, three to four months, we don't know how much longer it's going to be. Hopefully, we'll, we'll finish soon. Um, uh, maintenance of the center still need to go to go to carry on, and because there are no visitors, so money is not coming in. So if you are able to help, whatever little you can do, or a lot if you can do, uh, kindly um, uh, do so. And uh, later on, we can actually post a link, post a poster in the Facebook page and also in our WhatsApp group as well. So yes, it is very important as you can understand that education is the key to um, conservation. And we need to keep the um, education team in uh, KSNP uh, going. So kindly look deep into your pocket and do what you can do. All right, uh, Harris, can we start with some questions? All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Michael. All right. So if you have any questions, you can post them up in our Zoom chat here or in Facebook. All right. We have some questions. Uh, firstly, there's one asking, uh, how old are the mangroves? at the uh, KSNP. Okay. Our KSNP mangrove is actually quite old because um, according to the history curl, it's more than 100 years. Okay, during the Bukit, after the Bukit Melawati, okay, the mangrove is already there and some of the area already clean for the development. They make a barn and only certain areas still surviving. Okay, and roughly I can say, according to the, our studies, it's more than 30 years. Okay, mm, last study is in 1980, it's been 40 years. Okay, actually the main group already there before that. But historical, it's more than 100, yes. So it means it, it needs all our support to keep it sustaining. Yes. All right, because, next uh, question. Uh, Sorry, yes, yes, actually, right, right. Uh, because uh, the first settlement, human settlement at the Kuala Selangor uh, is more than 100 years, like uh, the Pasif number, the seafood area as well. And only evidence we still have is like a few temples 
people more than 100 years and church all okay that's early settlement okay but the problem is we are living in modern generation we need uh, scientific studies and publication to prove it okay so that's why i say the uh, publication is 1980 is uh, under wetland bureau okay okay another question is uh, i believe uh, many are very eager to come to see ksnp is the park already open okay uh, now we are open but only for the booking people need to book early and come and visit because uh, we have a new sop we already sent the our local municipality maludera kolaslanga and we are waiting for the approval so that means uh, to, so official is by appointment la yeah all right next question uh, okay there's uh, a question where uh, it says that uh, why does uh, the mangrove uh, smell there's a strong smell but over at langkawi and kari island there's not not very strong smell so is there any difference in uh, the locality or okay. the species oh okay that's a good question because the smell mean what people need to understand smell mean is richness okay it was rich with the food nutrient okay proteins the vitamins everything was there so that's the meaning of the smell okay so if it's really but at the same time you also you remember eh? the mud smell and the rubby smells different okay so it should be the mud smell okay mud smell is more smelly it's me is more rich right that's very interesting michael mm. all right next is uh there's a question when will be a good time to visit would it be in the morning or would it be in the evening okay uh, not only at this park every park morning is the best time okay early morning okay early bird catch the worm there's a priest so early morning is the best time because you can avoid from the any insects or mosquito bites or all first and second morning every animals going for looking for the food because the animals waking up early only human just sleep late and waking up late okay so you want to go and see the animals you need to come early and you also if got chance you can see otters because here we got uh, three species of otters eh? and otters are all as early and then the animal and they are you see and you can see All right that's very interesting so the best time to come is early in the morning so everyone you have to wake up very early okay yes next question uh as as we have our mco uh the parks were closed did we observe any changes or any improvements has it affected in color in the ecology positively or negatively uh, of course there's a lot of changes okay first the we can easily identify the monkey behavior changing okay the monkey uh, um spend more time at the park because usually during the uh, before mco the monkey wake up early go outside for scavenging for the food because people feed the monkey okay now the monkey back to their normal diet will stay in the park Mama, eat green say, leaves yeah, eat green leaves all Okay. The next, we can see a lot of animals movement. Okay. If there was a before MCO, there's a lot of people come and go. So if there's a butterfly or why even wild boar, otters, quite difficult because only at a certain times the animals will cross the path. So, but yeah. during MCO, there's a no much activity. There's a no school, no cars, nothing. So we can see the animals are uh, moving. every day you can see even the birds like uh, owls okay by the owl puppy fish owl so flying all over the place we can see yes it's very interesting to know that uh, the 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 wildlife is roaming free during mco yeah. all right another question is how do we know the age of the mangrove is there any way to identify the age of the mangrove the mangrove tree okay. itself Okay. So, yeah. So, main group is uh. Yeah. 
Yeah. You're doing kill? Is the mic or your mute your own mic? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Okay. For the carbon study, okay, we need to do the carbon study to identify the all of mangrove trees. Okay. Otherwise, if we plant the mangrove trees, we have data. How many it's like how long it's already planned. But otherwise, if you go to the new place, new trees, we need to study the carbon and how many layers. And sometimes, uh, uh, if the trees are really huge, eh, the size, uh, the diameters, more than like a big timber trees, eh, we can easily say it's more than 50 years. Big group. Right, that's interesting. Okay, next, our next question will be, uh, would it be good, good to visit at night? Uh, if you want to see uh, nocturnal animals, uh, does KSNP will have any any plans to open at night? Actually, we have at night, but only open on the request because at night we they need to submit their name list all. So usually the bird watcher, the it's like a who want to see the owls, they will come at night. And firefly study also because at Kolaslango we have three types of firefly. So people who are on the study about the firefly, they need to come at night. And we also have a luminous fresh water snail, the luminous uh, lighting. So these things all they need to study at night. So they will come at night, but they need to inform early because otherwise uh, our security guard won't allow people to come in. Okay. All right. So that means it can be done with a pre-arrangement, prior arrangement uh, with approval from uh, KSNP. All right. Next. Um, what time does the park normally open if let's say uh, when it's planned to be reopened? So uh, our, our our eager participants here can make the arrangement <laughs> to come to visit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, the park, the counter. So counter only open at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. morning. But our gardeners, the housekeeping staff will start work 7.30 morning. But the bird watcher, it's like uh, any bird groups and MNS bird groups all, they will inform early. So sometimes they will come Seven o'clock, they already entered to the park. We'll open the gate for them. So that means they, it can be uh, pre-arranged, the, the arrival of the yes. guests. All right, that's good. Um, what kind of uh, conservation activities, activities that, can be, that can be done uh, from schools? That is, that means what kind of activities that schools can organize at the park? Okay, yeah. because inside our park, we have uh, accommodation. Okay, we got a hostel, chalet, dormitory, so, so the student can come and stay here three days, two nights, and do environmental education activity, <clears throat> like a tree planting, mangrove cleanup, it's a mangrove talk, nature-based activities like a, a nature craft, or collage making, go to the party field visit, because College Lango is a wetland area. We can see mangrove forest, we can see the peat swamp forest, we can see the paddy area, so all. So the student can go to the paddy visit, okay? Then all the mud ball making and other small, small activities. And we also have a nursery, they also can do the activity inside the nursery, how to plant the mangrove trees, so all. Yeah, it's quite uh, very uh, fun field activities that I see here. Right, so is, is camping allowed at the uh, nature park? Okay, last time we have a camping ground, but the uh, thing is to maintain the camping ground is quite tough. Okay, and nowadays uh, not much people come and do the camping. That's why it's all uh, it's under early arrangement. They need to notice us early, they want to come and do the camping because we need to clean the area, grass cutting, put the sulfurs or some things, animals all. Then only people can come and camp there because we also have a chalet. Usually, we will just suggest them just stay in chalet. If they really want to do the camping, they need to inform us early, so we need to prepare the place. All right, that's good. That means it can be prearranged as well. Yes, right. Um, there are some who are asking for contact information to make these arrangements, so maybe later you can share how they can make this arrangement, who to contact the contact persons, and all that to make the arrangements. Yeah, sure. Right. Next will be: uh, Is there any publication on the research uh, that has been conducted? There, I believe there are many researchers who are frequenting uh, KSNP to study about the otters, dragonflies, uh, and so on. 
So, are there any publication uh, that that uh, that can they can they can refer to and research to get more information? Okay, Kuala um, is one of the park near the Klang Valley. So, once I say Klang Valley, you can see there is a lot of universities there in, from the University of Malaya, UPM, UKM, UITM. So, all the students, if they want to do the study about the main group, they need to be here. So they will come and do the study, yes. Okay. So they will publish their publication inside any journal and sometimes they will share with us. For example, just now I say there's 11 species of the mudskipper. Their study was done by Dr. Polka from UM. Okay. And we also other studies all published in journal. So people just keen Colossal Nature Park, they can get a lot of the information, journal studies about the Colosslango and also about the monkey. Okay, there's a lot of study on there. It's it's good to know that our local universities are jointly supporting and researching this park. Yeah. Right. Uh, the mangroves. Uh, there's a question there. Who planted them? Or are they growing themselves? I believe uh, some are planted by uh, CSR activities, but mostly it is uh, grown uh, growing on its own. Am I am I right, Mr. Michael? Yes. Yes. Um, Okay, yeah. this one just for information. Lah. Before 2000, year 2000, there's no much mangrove planting activity in Malaysia. Okay, it's not a popular activity because during, before that, in 1990s to 2000, there's a lot of research was done at the mangrove. Then after that only, early 2000, people start to understand the importance of the main group and start to do the tree planting so but during that time it's a small scale okay and after 2005 2005 2010 main planting is like a become one of the popular any corporate company any person individual huh, they will say i want to come and do the mangrove planting because they think that was an easy task eh? go and plant but actually, there's a mud area up to there only. Oh, yeah, why I come here? <laughs> okay, so they will come and do the mangrove planting. So it means most of three was planted up to 2005. Okay, and 2010 is like a mega project in Malaysia. Even the national government, uh, federal government, they support for the tree planting. And we have planted more than a million trees in Malaysia. Okay, and Kolos Lango is part of it. And until today, they are still doing the tree planting. So, all the small trees near to the walking quad all was a planter. But inside the forest, the big, huge tree is a natural one. Okay, um, guys, Harris and Michael, I would like to interject because of time. Is it uh, okay? We make that one as a last question, unless there's anything uh, that is burning. Okay, um, just to wrap up. Everybody, so while Harris is uh, looking at the, the quiz results, let me wrap up the, the discussion. So basically, mangroves only exist in the tropical country, like especially in Malaysia and far, uh, most of sub, all of Southeast Asia. And of course, we have fireflies as well in, in among the mangroves themselves. And the importance of mangroves, beach protection, storm breaker, especially this was actually um, very much highlighted after the tsunami. I think it was in 2004. Uh, mangroves are very critical for food supply to the, uh, the, to the animals and then eventually for us as well because uh, we actually harvest seafood and so on. Uh, charcoal has been used for a long time and is still critical for us uh, in, in this uh, uh, year 2020 and we get that from the mangroves um, area. Um, a lot of research and education as well in terms of um, uh, medicine like the mangrove fern and of course as I mentioned earlier uh, the uh, charcoal. Um, silver leaf monkey is endemic in this area so it is critical that we protect to ensure the survival and uh, there's an interesting idea, uh, interesting fact was that there are 11 species of mudskipper, but all the male and female are different. So you have to actually study 22 species, kind of. All right. So what are the threats 
uh, uh, for mangroves. Of course, development is the, the number one. Over tourism as well, when you have too much tourism going to this, into that area, you got rubbish, uh, you get it being uh, more developed, so, so that area will be under threat. Uh, pollution from industrial waste and shrimp farms, and of course, rubbish. Um, this is very critical that we all, as nature lover, actually we all, I know we all nature lovers, so we, we will probably not, uh, what you call, throw waste uh, discriminately. But if you can help to actually educate your neighbors, educate your friends on this important step of not throwing rubbish, uh, put them in the right place. And then there was another one about smell. It's uh, good to know that smell means good in terms of mangroves, all right? Mud smell. Okay, so that, that's uh, the wrap up of a uh, summary of the talk. And um, let me see, uh, Harris, are we ready? Yes, we're ready. Okay, why don't you share the screen and then we see who was the first three to actually get the highest score. Go ahead, please. All right. All right, everyone. So these are the uh, replies, response for the quiz. Uh, we have uh, three winners over here. The first three persons who uh, answered all the questions correctly. Uh, first wow. is uh, Yap Kian Wee. Second is Chua Sun Tan. And the third is Karina Katikayan. So congratulations, congratulations to the three of you. All right, Woody, back to you. Okay. Michael, anything to say about that? What do you think of their performance? You mute yourself. Unmute, unmute. Okay. Oh, that's a good. There's a lot of participants. Manu, that's how many percent total correct? Seven out of seven. How many? Seven out of seven, uh, seven. Harris? One, two, three, four, hang on. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Well, I think thirteen to fourteen around there. Thirteen to fourteen persons to uh, many persons to manage to get all correct. Okay, that's great. But I also there were there's any that's a another thing I'm gonna just share lah. Okay, the first one, two, three. They will get a book, main group of Colors Lagno. Okay, main group of Colors Lagno. And also a pocket guide to the main group area. Okay. Wow, that is a, a good price. Guide the, okay, pocket guide to the main group area. And the bird card. Okay, bird card. And now the one. Fridge magnet. <laughs> okay. You can see there's a fridge magnet. Yes, yes, okay. you can see. And save nature for picture. But that's the three percent. They will get all three of these things. But there's another balance around ten percent. We still give a prize. Okay, I will give them a bird card for them. Bird card and fridge magnet for them. Cash okay. For the other winners. Okay, thank you very much, Michael. That's very generous. So for the winners, uh, later on, uh, we'll pass your details to Michael, and then he will arrange for the um, delivery and so on. All right. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us and for taking part in the quiz. So a lot of people actually know a lot about the mangroves itself. And just uh, before we wrap up, I just want to share with you a couple of things. Uh, firstly, our next event, uh, let me see. Share the screen. So we will be moving from the mangroves, from the butterflies, from the terrapins. We're going to go to space. Can you all see that? Okay, yeah. so the next event will be the um, regarding the astronomy and what we can see uh, from Port Dixon itself. So we will we we'll have a special speaker, Sarah will be joining us and Harris will be hosting this uh, particular program. It is on the, on the 4th of July, 
uh, uh, from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. So uh, look out through Facebook. Uh, we will post that up once we have uh, we are ready for registration. Okay, and again, just a reminder because of this uh, MCO situation, uh, kindly look. Um, I will send the link and the poster later on. Uh, kindly look, um, see if you can help out Pulau uh, Selangor National Park in this um, period because uh, for the past three to four months, there were no guests and, and you know, guests bring in the, the money for them to continue their education, to continue their wonderful work that they're doing to educate the public on the importance of, of mangroves itself uh, in terms of, uh, and uh, the importances I've already highlighted to you earlier. So again, I thank my uh, uh, co-host, co uh, Lin Leung Ping and Harris doing the background work. And uh, Mr. Michael, thank you so much. And everybody stay safe and see you next time. Thank you very much. And the, um, uh, the, the videos will be up on Facebook as well. And the second part of this, um, the video on the Kola Salango uh, Park, because we didn't have time to finish that, I will send out the link onto our YouTube and you can take your time to look at that to learn more about mangroves. Okay, thank you very much and I'll see you again next time. Bye. Bye.